the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video. It is geeky, whether you like it or not. We're going to dive into our severe weather risk on Thursday in this video, and we'll talk about the longer range once again as well. The uh, top story will be that risk for severe weather coming up in about 24 hours after I record this video. But quick review of our temperatures so far in April. We're one-third of the way through the month. And despite the chill that we had last week, it has been a warmer than average start to April. We had 62 today after 77 yesterday. Today wasn't exactly a cold day, but it was quite a bit cooler, of course, than yesterday. We've also been plagued by some rain at times from last night through today. It's all been pretty light. Occasionally, a little burst of a more moderate rain has resulted in a few rain gauges picking up a little more than a quarter of an inch worth of rain, close to a half an inch in places like Canfield and heading down towards Oh, well, Washingtonville and near the Salem area as well. But the general rule over the last 24 hours has been a tenth or so worth of rain. We're going to add on to these totals, certainly, over the next few days. It was a gloomy one today. A time-lapse video from our Canfield Fairgrounds camera. Yeah, slate gray overcast. Good thing the eclipse was not today, right? Uh, we didn't see very much in the way of uh, uh, holes in the uh, cloud cover today. And again, occasionally, these clouds have been producing a little bit of rain. As of 7.07 on this Wednesday evening, the light rain trying to push back in. All of this is fairly innocuous, um, but it's a little bit of a nuisance. You have to flip on the wipers every now and then, and showers will continue to come and go as we head through the uh, overnight hours. All right, tomorrow, uh, this is what our risk looks like. And, you know, we speculated on Weather for Weather Geeks last evening that the Storm Prediction Center, when this became the Day 2 outlook, might introduce an enhanced risk, a level 3. Um, for severe weather uh, somewhere in our region. And with the midday update, they did indeed do that today. It's centered mostly around Interstate 77 from Canton and Akron on south towards the Ohio River, down towards Parkersburg, Marietta, and places like that. But the enhanced risk does clip parts of my television market as well around the Youngstown, Ohio area. And this is two enhanced risks that we've had in the last two weeks. It was about 10 days ago, nine or 10 days ago, that we had an enhanced risk that didn't, uh, you know, it didn't pan out that we had a lot of severe weather, certainly in, in our region, but we did have that enhanced risk. I think it was on April the 1st. And we typically only in our part of Ohio and Western Pennsylvania, we're only typically placed in that enhanced risk by the Storm Prediction Center one, two, three times per year. Now that, those are long-term averages, some years more, some years less, but having two in two weeks here in early April, definitely a little bit Unusual. So the risks tomorrow, and they're pretty much everything, all severe weather hazards. We've got wind shear. Uh, we've got instability. Now, it's not through the roof, that instability tomorrow, because we're going to see some showers from time to time, and the holes in the clouds may not be super numerous for a while. So we're going to rely a lot more on the wind shear tomorrow than we will extreme amounts of instability. But nonetheless, the combination of th those two vital severe weather ingredients probably comes together the best. Again, closer to I-77, Canton, Akron, Dover, New Philly, uh, down towards uh, Cambridge, Zanesville, and heading down towards Parkersburg and Marietta. But that's where the axis of best uh, combination of those ingredients is. On either side of that axis, we can still see an elevated risk for not only damaging winds, but some hail producing storms and perhaps isolated tornadoes as well. In fact, with that enhanced risk, uh, issuance today by the Storm Prediction Center at midday uh, that it did introduce a 10% tornado risk tomorrow in the yellow area from roughly Canton and Akron on southward towards parts of West Virginia and extreme eastern Kentucky. On either side of that 10% risk, you got a 5% risk that it covers most of the Youngstown area, most of our television market, and then on the outer fringes it's 2%. And as I always say when we show these maps, these numbers might seem small, but when you consider, you know, an average day in our part of the country, the risk of a tornado within 25 miles of any location is way less than 1%. A 5, 10% risk is pretty elevated. So, you know, the ingredients are certainly there for tomorrow. But, you know, I oftentimes compare severe weather days or potential severe weather days to like baking a cake. You might have all the ingredients, but, you know, if you don't put them together just right, if you have a little too much sugar, if you don't have enough sugar, uh, enough cream, enough milk, all the things that go into making a cake, then the cake isn't going to turn out right. And severe weather days are kind of like that. You need all those ingredients at the in the right proportions, right timing. You got to know what you're doing to actually produce a high-end severe weather day. So that remains to be seen whether we're going to have that, but the potential is there. This warm front lifts through in the morning. Now there can be a shower at any point really on Tuesday, on a Thursday, 
best chance maybe early in the day and then again around midday. The longer of a break from the showers we get in the afternoon, the higher the storm chances will be as we head towards evening. If the showers continue coming and going, that's going to make the instability really lacking because we probably won't see that many holes in the clouds if that's the premise. Our in-house model here has a couple of waves of showers still pushing through in the afternoon. Maybe there's a rumble of thunder. But our severe weather risk will be conditional uh, upon, you know, upon uh, how things go tomorrow afternoon. Uh, if we get a long, a long pro pronounced break from the wet weather and the sun comes out, that's going to ramp up our, our storm chances. Now the timing, this is mostly early evening. We've kind of adjusted our timing a little bit this evening based on the latest high resolution models. It's probably somewhere between 6 and 9. Earlier we were saying kind of 5 to 8. Now it looks more like 6 to 9. Looks a little bit slower, a little bit later than some of the other modeling had shown. And then the severe weather risk will quickly end. These storms will probably be moving pretty quickly. And then the story for Friday is this is just a grim weather day on Friday with clouds and gusty breezes and showers and temperatures in the 40s. It's going to feel like the 30s. Um, thankfully, this kind of weather is not going to last very long in a Friday evening, but then the raindrops fade away, and any clouds that are around first thing Saturday morning should part, leaving us with lots of sunshine for Saturday afternoon. Still a cool, gusty breeze on Saturday, but the sun will be out, and it won't be as uh, kind of grizzly as Friday. But nonetheless, severe weather or not, we certainly don't need any rain around here after all the wet weather we had earlier on this month. Our models are showing at least an inch in most of our area as an area-wide average through Friday evening. And that's just an area-wide area, area -wide average. You know the deal in thunderstorms. You can get some localized heavier amounts. It's you know not inconceivable, of course, that someone gets a couple or even a few inches worth of rain between now and the end of the week, depending on how thunderstorms track. Um, but as a region-wide average, I think we're looking at an, an, an additional inch to maybe an inch and a half or so. And with the ground still fairly wet and the possibility of some gusty winds in any thunderstorms uh, late in the day tomorrow, that raises the specter of downed trees and power lines and power uh, outages and things like that. Once we get beyond this quick uh, cool shot at the end of the weekend, the start of the weekend, boy, spring's going to do its thing next week for a handful of days. 57 on Saturday, but then we bounce to 70 on Sunday. Might be a shower or a thunderstorm in the mix on Sunday. But after that, Lots of highs in the lower and middle 70s for next week, but the next cool down is showing up at the end of this 10 day period, right around the 19th and 20th. I think we're heading into probably a week, maybe five days or a week worth of pretty cool weather starting around the 19th or 20th and taking us up through about the 26th or 27th. This is today's eight to 14 day temperature outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. This runs from the 18th through the 24th. Now this period probably starts mild, but ends chilly and so it graphically is displayed on the map as some orange and red, <clears throat> but that's influenced a lot by the very beginning of this period. Some of this cooler air or cooler weather that you see out toward north and west looks like it's going to make inroads for a handful of days. So enjoy spring, full octane springtime next week, a little more like a May pattern for a handful of days by next week. In the meantime, got a lot to track over the next 24 hours or so. We, of course, are your uh, source for the most detailed weather information. We'll do some live streaming tomorrow evening if needed. Make sure you're following me on all the social medias, and I don't have it on here, but I'm on TikTok now. Search for me on TikTok, Eric WFMJ. I'm not going to be dancing and doing a lot of things that you see on TikTok, but we'll post some weather information there in case you have TikTok. Well, I know a lot of you do, and uh, you find yourself scrolling that more and more these days. So look for me there. Look for me on all the social medias, and we'll see you back here, perhaps with the weather for Weather Geeks on Thursday, but if we're tracking severe weather, we'll hold off on the geeky video until Friday evening.